Hello everyone, as you know, today the CPI numbers came in for July and we're pretty much flat. We're still at the same 8.5% on the CPI U, which the market then in turn decided is going to rally and we're up on the day probably just about to about 4, 18.50. We did touch 4.20 on the SPY ETF. So the market really liked that news. Basically what that means is that the news isn't bad. So what does that mean for the calculation that we've been hard at work for to figure out what the cost of living adjustment will be in 2023? Well, actually, if we take a look at the CPI W, we'll find out that the CPI W actually declined by 0.1%. And here's the numbers here from the CPIW. So as you can see here, the consumer price index for urban wage earners and clerical workers, the CPIW, increased 9.1% over the last 12 months, which is actually a decline month over month, declined by 0.1% prior to the seasonal adjustment. And basically what that looks like is, remember how we discussed how the calculation is formulated. If we take the three months of July, and we say that the CPIW does not change, let's say it remains stable, then we would have 292.219 as that number. We would add those three numbers up, that'd be 876.657. And then we subtract last year's third quarter, which we have that number, it's 805.262. We would then go ahead and average those two numbers the numbers for 2022 and 2021, we would subtract 2021's number from 2022 and then divide it by 2021's number, multiply it by 100 to get the percentage. And if the CPIW stays at this one stable declination of 0.1% month over month, we will get the increase of 8.9%. Now this is very good, but as I said in my last video, this also is an index or these indices Remember, Social Security, the government, they all know that if CPIW remains inflated month over month, remains higher, then they will need to, number one, increase the Social Security payments, and number two, increase the brackets at which we are taxed. So if the government wants to make the tax brackets less favorable for its citizens, and make social security increases less favorable for its citizens in order to save money for that big budget bill they just released, then potentially you could see the CPIW continue to decline. Now, I'm not someone who is a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but what I am gonna say is that the CPIU and the CPIW, all the CPI numbers are calculated by the government, their data is not taken from things that we as regular consumers and business people have access to, things like MLS reports, that's for the real estate, right? Real estate's a huge component of CPI. Food prices and things of that nature, energy prices, they don't take those data points from the actual data that we have many of these, at least the weightings of these things, come from surveys conducted by BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and then compiled. So it's, it's the interpretation of what people are doing out there instead of the actual raw data that is happening. So even if the Fed had said they're gonna stick to the data, that could just mean that the Fed and the government is more interested in kind of manipulating said data in order to provide number one better numbers to the public and number two lower benefits for us for the citizens who are obviously hurting from the high rate of inflation not to make this a grim video but you know 8.9 percent cola increase would still be nice if we do have this decrease again it would take about another decrease of i'd say one percent month over month to drop us below eight percent so we're highly likely to have an eight percent increase at least you know numbers wise from a normal distribution at least in, in my head so i think at least eight percent 
much lower than the 9 to 11 percent initially I thought, but it looks like inflation has cooled off. So with that said, you guys have a great rest of the day. Enjoy the week. Enjoy this wonderful month of August, and I'll see you in the next video.